August 2012, NASA's Curiosity rover arrives on Mars. Just beneath the surface, NASA scientists are expecting to find red oxidized iron dust, and plenty of it. What they're not expecting to find is evidence of a nuclear war. A devastating conflict that seems to have taken place on Mars 300 million years ago. Curiosity rover has been sent to Mars to analyze the chemical composition of the red planet. What it finds, to the surprise of planetary scientists, are significant amounts of Xenon-129. The Mars Curiosity rover found that the abundance of Xenon-129 is much higher than what we see here on Earth. What process is creating this enhanced abundance of Xenon? NASA's first guess is that its origin is the sun. A lot of the Martian atmosphere gets these atoms from the solar wind, from the stuff that the sun is spewing out. But the Xenon-129 is way more in the Martian atmosphere than it is in the solar wind. So where's that extra Xenon-129 coming from? Scientists around the world struggle to explain the presence of this radioactive isotope. Among those analyzing the data is Dr. John Brandenburg, a former NASA physicist and deputy manager on the Clementine moon mission. Brandenburg is amazed for one simple reason. Xenon-129 is the byproduct of nuclear weapon explosions. I have shown this to several nuclear weapons experts and they have affirmed that this is nuclear weapon signature. There is no other process that can create such a xenon spectrum. Earth has experienced over 70 years of atomic bomb testing, each time leaving traces of xenon-129. But the xenon-129 reading on Mars is still two and a half times higher than that found on Earth. The presence of certain elements on Mars indicate that there was a nuclear explosion or explosions on the surface of Mars at some point in the planet's history. Brandenburg observes two nuclear hotspots in the northern hemisphere of Mars, where radiation levels are higher than anywhere else on the planet. What's more, it appears the nuclear blasts were occurring in midair, above the surface. What's also interesting is what is not found. There is no crater at either site, indicating that these explosions were air bursts. The size of the radioactive hotspots leads Brandenburg to a devastating conclusion. We're talking nuclear weapons size of the Empire State Building dropped from space and detonating kilometers above the surface. Historically, if you look at pictures and listen to first-hand accounts of the explosion of the bombs at Nagasaki and Hiroshima, it's the same sort of thing. No crater, but massive explosion, massive expanse of energy, total destruction, everything in that energy's path. Brandenburg has analyzed the Mars rover data to establish when this nuclear holocaust occurred. Best estimates for time scale based on isotopic evidence is that this happened 300 million years ago. This could turn our concept of Mars completely on its head. Many scientists believe that millions of years ago, Mars had an atmosphere and liquid water, conditions where life could thrive. Mars might even have had oceans and lakes. Humans have looked for signs of life on Mars since telescopes could first scan its surface. In 1877, Giovanni Scaparelli mistakenly thinks he sees irrigation or transport canals crisscrossing the Martian landscape. In 1976, the Viking probe sends back low-resolution photos wrongly identifying pyramids and a giant sphinx-like face. But in 2016, 
Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter beams back higher quality images of what some have interpreted as the ruins of Bronze Age style walled cities. Obviously, a civilization in that state wouldn't have had the capability to blow themselves up with nuclear weapons, which means that somehow some other predatory alien race must have intervened. Imagine the inhabitants of this Martian civilization. All of a sudden, there's huge flashes of light and heat. Destruction reigns everywhere, and everything you've ever known is destroyed in an instant. It literally would have been hell on Mars. The weapons not only wiped out the civilization, but basically destroyed the biosphere of Mars, so it could never recover. The idea of a Martian civilization destroyed in this way seems incredible, and scientists have looked for other explanations for the presence of Xenon 129 on Mars. After all, it is possible for nuclear activity of sorts to take place in nature. On the continent of Africa, in the country of Gabon, there's a uranium deposit that's been discovered, and it shows clear evidence of a sustained nuclear reaction similar to what occurs in our fission reactors. Under very unique conditions, water flowing through the uranium deposit can cause fission, the same process used inside an atom bomb. But this thing did what it did 1.7 billion years ago. Not only were there no humans around then, there wasn't even multicellular life on Earth. Nature has illustrated that it can create its own nuclear reactors. The question is, could this same event have occurred naturally on Mars? But former NASA physicist Dr. John Brandenburg says the material found on Mars cannot have been produced by any natural nuclear process. A natural nuclear reactor, if it had gone unstable on Mars, not only would produce the wrong xenon spectrum, but it would have created two massive craters, and there was no craters. The ground is absolutely smooth. Brandenburg believes the evidence points in one direction. 300 million years ago, intelligent life on Mars was destroyed in a nuclear war of the worlds. We've now discovered that humanity is not the most evil species in the cosmos. We are not an aberration on nature. We're part of the fabric of the universe. And not everything in the universe is friendly. If this happened that Mars was attacked by aliens, it happened when there was virtually no intelligent life on Earth, so they wouldn't have noticed us. But the question remains, now that we're here, are they coming back?